Friends, welcome from this house to yours. How are you? It's the end of June and here in Vancouver after a few weeks of rain, the sun seems to finally be gaining a foothold. Gardens are blooming and many of us are cautiously beginning to expand our social circles and activities. For Trinity Grace, we will be continuing for now to worship together in our virtual space. You can check our website, www.tgucvan.ca, for other opportunities we have to connect both online and in person now, as some small groups are beginning to meet here in the church sanctuary. What's important is that today you have joined us for this time of worship. So now I would invite you to take a breath Allow yourself to be however you are today. Perhaps close your eyes and just open yourself to the grace and love of God, which is always with you, allowing it to pour over you and into you. And now we gather in the light of Christ, the light which beckons and welcomes us and encourages us to gather as fellow travelers on the way of love. Let us pray. Holy One whose spirit calls us into community you invite us to remember the welcome we receive in you and to be ready to welcome your prophets and messengers. Let us experience today your welcome to us, gathered in various places but joined in spirit. Show us that we are beloved and honored. Show us how we might welcome and honor all. Help us to know that the cup of water given in your name nourishes the one who gives and the one who receives. Satisfy our thirst to know your presence here and now. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10. Jesus sent the 12 disciples out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
Today in Matthew's Gospel, we hear Jesus talking about welcoming and being welcomed. In fact, the entire chapter the reading is from, chapter 10, is part of a discourse that Jesus gives as he sends the 12 apostles out, empowered and instructed to proclaim the good news that the reign of God is near. At the beginning of the chapter, Jesus summons the 12 and gives them authority to heal and cast out demons. And then, Matthew tells us, Jesus sent the 12 disciples out to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim the good news. The apostles are also commissioned to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Jesus then goes on to warn the disciples that their mission will be dangerous and will stir things up, but encourages them to have courage and hold to their mission and be bold in their proclamation. Jesus talks about the consequences as well for those who will not listen. He says, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. And he also gives them a bit of a carrot to hold out to help persuade people to listen, saying, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. I don't know about you, but I find that a little bit hard to get my head around. What does Jesus mean by welcoming a prophet? It can be easy to assume that what Jesus meant when he talked about welcome was the set of cultural expectations that existed in his day around welcoming and extending hospitality to visitors. It can make us think of ancient cultural expectations around hospitality to strangers, such as offering food, drink, and shelter. Our minds might also go to contemporary notions of hospitality, such as how you're made to feel at home when you are visiting someone, or what you do for others when they visit you. Just a few verses earlier, Jesus instructs his disciples about what to do, depending on whether or not they are welcomed and their words are listened to. In other words, Jesus is connecting true welcome with hearing or receiving the words and message of the prophet. Basically, he's telling the disciples, you can consider yourself truly welcomed if and when your message is welcomed. And so it might help us to understand the phrase, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, as basically saying, whoever, whoever receives and welcomes the message of the prophet in the name of the one who sent the prophet, i.e. in the name of Jesus. And so we see that the message isn't simply about extending a welcome or offering hospitality. It's a much more direct message about the rewards of accepting the message that is offered to us in the name of Christ and the consequences of not doing so. And now let's talk about that last part of that statement by Jesus about receiving a prophet's reward. A reward usually brings to mind something we receive or are given. It has a bit of a passive aspect to it. However, the word that gets translated as receive in this passage actually has a much more active meaning than the word receive might imply. A more accurate translation might be to take up with one's hands or take hold of in order to use. Kind of like if we were to pick up or take hold of an ax in order to chop wood. I suppose it then begs the question, what is the prophet's reward, the reward of the righteous? What is it we are offered and asked to take hold of and use once we have welcomed the prophet and received and accepted and internalized their message? Perhaps it's courage. 
Perhaps it's the reassurance Jesus gives those that he's sending out, that even the hairs of your head are all counted, and everyone who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Perhaps the prophet's reward is the courage of the mind, heart, and spirit of Christ working in us. So what from this exploration today can we take with us for the journey of faith? Perhaps we start with the fact that one of our first challenges is to discern between the false prophet and the true prophet. Then are we able to welcome the prophet in the sense that Jesus meant in terms of truly welcoming their message? And finally, once we welcome the message, we must ask ourselves, will we take hold of the prophet's reward, the courage of the mind, heart, and spirit of Jesus abiding with us, and make use of it to ourselves proclaim the good news and participate in the fulfillment of God's reign of justice, reconciliation, and healing? May it be so. God being our helper. Amen. Loving God, we lift up today our gratitude and thanksgiving, and also our concerns and burdens as we pray for the needs of the Church, the whole human family, and all the world. Let us pray for the Church. Faithful God, you formed us in your image and call us into community to be the hands and feet of Christ, and to proclaim that your kingdom is near. Strengthen us today to live faithfully, in gratitude for all life's blessings and for the mission we are given. 
let us pray for peace. God of all-embracing love, you sent Jesus to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. Create in us the peace that only you can give, and put down arrogance, pride, and anger that turns sibling against sibling, friend against friend, neighbor against neighbor. We pray for all places and situations of conflict in the world. Let us pray for those for whom we feel alienated. O God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, remind us constantly that your will is mutuality, care, and friendship. Replace fear with trust and resentment with reconciliation that all your children may live in harmony and right relationship. Let us pray for all who suffer. God of the cross, look with compassion on all who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Support them with your love, and those who are homesick and lost, those who feel estranged from their community or world, those who suffer from shortages of food and other necessities of life. Be with those who feel unheard and bind up those whose spirits are broken. Holy One, may our prayers rise this day on eagles' wings. May we listen and welcome the prophets you send to us and respond to your prophetic call in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. As we finish this time of worship together, I encourage you to move through this upcoming week holding before you the words of Jesus, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. This day may the Spirit quench your thirst for love, satisfy your need to be known, and bless you to be a prophet of welcome. Peace be with you.